that's turning again. Okay, this time it's done. Good. Okay. Ah, thank you so much for that, Avni. Yeah. Um, all right, we'll um, begin. Um, so we finished first John last week. So uh, this week we will look into second John and third John and be able to complete the portion. Uh, so um, you know if we can turn in our Bibles to second John right now, um, we'll um, begin with the opening verse. Uh, before we do that, just to give an introduction, um, this particular letter is written as a warning because there are uh, traveling preachers going from church to church and um, they are teaching wrong doctrine uh, and yeah it's mainly doctrine you know related to gnosticism um, the false teachings which were coming in and uh, so this is a warning not to entertain such people so it's a very brief letter and um, um, John is, you know, asking the people to be careful whom they invite into their churches, into their homes, uh, so that they will not be deceived. So that's the basic um, crux of this entire letter. And uh, we'll very briefly go through uh, the verses. So uh, the opening verse, uh, if we could have someone read out verse one. Yes. Second John chapter 1, verse 1. The elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all who know the truth. Yes. So these are the opening lines, and uh, there's a lot of debate regarding this, because um, generally letters are not written like this, or at least were not written like this in uh, at that time. So they wonder whether it's really being spoken to one specific person or whether it is just a term that is being used for the church. Um, you know, so uh, why is the church being referred to as a lady? Um, they're not very sure. So different commentaries have different views regarding this. Um, it could be that they're addressing the lady in whose home the house church is meeting. Uh, because at that time they didn't have, you know, institutionalized churches where you'd have it your, your own uh, uh, campus and your building and all of that. Uh, the church basically were the people. And so they would just meet in uh, whichever home has been opened up for them. So they would meet in homes. So is he addressing, is John addressing the lady who runs this particular uh, house church or, or at least uh, the house church in, in which her home is uh, in, a, in a, the house church, uh, which is running in her home, um, we're not very sure. Uh, most commentaries will just say that uh, uh, the church is being personalized as a woman and being addressed as a lady. Um, so it could either be the, the letter is being given to a specific woman who is uh, or who has opened up her home for the church. Or it can refer to all of the um, all of the people in, in a local church, and the local church itself is being called a lady. Not very sure. Um, if we look at verse four, in verse four it talks about where he says, "It has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth." Uh, the "your" over there is singular, um, as though he is addressing one single lady and you know, her children. But on the other hand, when we look at the rest of the verses, there he's, you know, wherever he says you, um, you know, he, he's talking about the plural you, as in, as though he's addressing all of the believers meeting in that church. So let's just leave it at that. Um, uh, it, it's He's probably just referring to a house church. And maybe he's speaking to the in charge of the house. The, the letter has been formally addressed to the lady in whose home that church meets. Uh, but this letter is not basically to her. It's basically to the house church um, as such. So um, this letter would have been passed on from one house to the uh, from one house church to the other uh, because you know um, uh, generally in those times. Uh, the apostles would write to one church 
and then uh, whatever information is over there would be passed on to the other house churches as well so that everyone gets to learn whatever teaching is contained in that particular letter so in the same way you know this is a uh, letter of warning and so after uh, it was you know read out in this particular house church i'm sure this this church would have passed it on to the other house churches as well so that they took you know can stand warned and they took and take care so that they don't entertain the wrong kind of uh, uh, preaching traveling preachers in their homes um so um yeah it says over here um to the lady chosen by god and to her children whom i love in the truth so he says that uh, he loves these people this this church in the truth so uh, he's basically referring to the believers who have chosen to stay true to the you know correct teaching of jesus christ and um, uh, they genuinely believe that jesus christ came in the flesh so uh, he's he affirms here that he is addressing such people and that he loves them in the truth and uh, he is clearly you know separating this congregation from the other false um, from from the other fake christians who have now gone into gnosticism so he says uh, I, i love them in the truth and not only i but also all who know the truth so he is uh, very very clearly referring to the uh wrong teachings which have crept in and he is saying that we who stand in the truth are not like this we are apart from the others so he segregates and makes it very clear that there is a distinction between the right teaching and the wrong teaching the followers of the right teaching and the followers of the wrong teaching uh and then in in verse 2 he goes on to say because of the truth which lives in us and will be with us forever so why do we have this love among us it is because we are you know um based on the truth on the other hand if you look at the uh, the you know the the fake christians who have gone into gnosticism uh, they seem to have a superiority complex they seem to be speaking to the as though they are superior to the others uh, they they do not have the love and the uh, and that feeling of fellowship which these people hold in their hearts why because they are not based on the truth so he makes that point he says over here you know i love uh your children in the truth uh, and not only i but all who know the truth why because uh, the truth lives in us and will be with us forever so this is not just truth which they uh, which you know john and the other believers have just um learned at a mind level intellectual level but this is a truth which they are literally living out you know it's been internalized absorbed inside them to such an extent that they are literally living out the truth so um the question uh, to us would be uh, how do we approach our christian walk is it just a lot of information that we have gathered in our minds or have we internalized and absorbed this truth uh, of scripture to such an extent that it is affecting the way we talk it affects the way we think uh, it 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 uh, influences our interactions so uh, has it been internalized to that extent because over here he talks about a truth which is not just truth which you know as information which even the demons know even the demons are aware that, that you know of the truth at an intellectual level but these people know the truth in in an experiential way where they are literally living it out in their everyday lives okay so uh, he so he says that because of the truth which lives in us and will be with us forever so here there is also uh, an implication towards jesus christ himself as the truth uh, so he too lives in us and he too will be with us forever so um, moving on to the third verse uh, he is you know pronouncing a blessing upon them and uh, he says grace mercy and peace from god the father and from jesus christ the father's son uh, will be with us in truth and love now generally we have this kind of a statement at the beginning of most letters right um where some kind of blessing is spoken over the uh, people who are you know uh, receiving the letter but we see a difference over here um if we were to compare it with the other letters where you have a, you know um um a, a word of blessing being spoken there it's more like you know 
may the lord be with you you know or may his grace rest upon you you know it's more like a wish but over here it's not really so much a wish that john is expressing over here but rather it almost sounds like as if he's making a statement and is making a teaching over here so it's not just a wish that is being expressed you know in the way that was customary in those letters but rather he is actually making a teaching statement over here so let's actually look at another you know a letter where and uh, look at how this kind of wording would have been used over there and then compare it with the way it is used over here so that we can see that john is actually trying to bring out something in you know in making this statement over here so if someone could read out for us romans chapter 1 verse 7 where you have a similar kind of you know um um introductory blessing being made by paul but then look at the wording over there and look at the wording over here so romans chapter 1 verse 7 if someone could read out please to all those in rome who are loved by god and called to be saints Grace and uh, yeah. grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so it's like a wish that he is saying, you know, may grace and peace be with you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's it's a wish that he is expressing that this is what he desires for them that grace and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ would rest upon them. but here if you look at uh, the wording being used by john he says grace mercy and peace from god the father and jesus christ will be with us it's like a statement okay there's no wishing may it rest upon you nothing of the kind he's making a statement and saying it will be with us and uh, so if you actually take apart this um, introductory blessing you see many many um, points that he is making uh the first thing that we see is that uh he says it will be with us he includes himself you know in the statement it's not he's not just saying may grace be upon you he is saying this grace this peace it's going to be with all of us and he includes himself as part of that and he also way he makes a point over here where he specifically says and from jesus christ the father's son because um, you know of all this gnostic teaching where different things were being said uh, the 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 truth of who exactly jesus is was not being clearly accepted so he kind of um uh, re you know affirms here that jesus christ is the father's son he is divine uh, he you know points out that aspect and then he also says um that he will be with us in truth and love so um the lord is with us when we continue to hold on to the truth and we continue to practice the love that he has taught us to you know hold on to so uh, all of these statements show that this is not just an introductory blessing that is being given it's more like a statement of doctrine uh, a statement of theology that is being made by john over here okay so those are your introductory verses and then he goes on into the main content and uh, so he talks about walking in the truth uh, if we can have someone read out verse 4 second john verse 4 i rejoice greatly that i have found some of your children walking in truth as we received commandment from the father was 5 and now i plead with you lady not as though i wrote a new commandment to you but that which we had have had from the beginning that we love one another yes so you know again over here he brings up that introductory you know a uh, term uh, saying you know lady so it does seem as though he is speaking to an actual person um you know it it would be rather strange to say you know uh, dear lady all people's church we would really not say, use that kind of terminology even back then they did not use that kind of terminology so yes it seems to be an actual person in whose home the house church is meeting uh, so um 
he again brings up this term and now he uh, he says i'm not writing you a new command but one we have had from the beginning and he says you know love one another so oh, he's basically saying i'm full of joy i'm so happy to learn that you know many of your spiritual children all the you know people who are meeting in that local church all of you are walking in the truth and br this brings me joy he says why because a lot of people have now been influenced and have been led away by stray uh, you know by by false teachers but these people have not strayed these people are holding on to the truth and this brings him joy and so he says it's very good that you are walking in the truth but also remember there's another part to it you must also walk in love uh, so um, it's not enough to just simply uh, know the truth um, you must also express it uh, in your actions and over here uh, you know the grammar of this particular phrase where he says i ask that we love one another uh, that's supposed to be in the present subjunctive form it just basically means it's like a continuous thing you are supposed to continue walking in love okay is is the way you would word it so because you are walking in the truth and because you're saying that you have that you're holding on to the right doctrine the one which was originally imparted by jesus christ because you are making that claim now prove it through your actions prove it by on in an ongoing manner you know walking in love and expressing this truth in actual action because that's the, that's something which the fake christians were not doing so they were on, they were they were big with words but very uh, poor in action but here he says we should not be like that we should be able to express this truth in our actions uh, all right um moving on into verse 6 and this is love uh, that we walk in obedience to his commands as you have heard from the beginning his command is that you walk in love so uh, he's just you know um confirming that the, that love and truth are connected uh, love in action and truth are connected um, moving into verse 7 um yeah if someone could read out verse 7 Ah, uh, someone could please read out verse seven, Second John. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and antichrist. Yes. Ah, uh, so here he says, um, many um, okay, who do not acknowledge have gone out into the world. uh in all the other places where they talk about deceivers and antichrists these are people who are outside the church and from the outside they are attacking the church they are persecuting the church and in that sense they are antichrists uh you know they are uh, uh, persecuting god's church here you have antichrist being the term antichrist being used in a different sense these are people who have pretended to be part of the church they have pretended to be part of the flock and from inside the church they have gone out into the world okay so that's the contrast that we see between the antichrist uh, the kind of antichrist mentioned over here in john and the general antichrist who are mentioned in the other um, you know other new testament books so um, when it comes to the other antichrist figures there's usually political connotations uh, there are people who have, who have established themselves in power uh, you know including the final antichrist who will come in the end uh, so these are all more political figures and uh, they use their political power uh, to take a stand against god and his kingdom and uh, so it's it's a different kind of antichrist the one that he this john is talking about is so subtle uh these are people who have pretended to be part of the flock they are they are claiming to be the true church they are claiming that they know the truth about jesus christ and so um this is a more dangerous kind of antichrist uh that john is referring to because these people are coming uh, to their doorsteps and saying you know we have come with good teaching you know can we stay in your home for a few days and you know meet with your uh, church members and and you know let's discuss these truths so they're being very very subtle about it and so um, you know he's warning and saying this people who are coming uh, they are actually deceivers and antichrist so you know they need to be very careful about such people so he that is why he says in verse 8 
watch out that you do not lose what we have worked for but that you may be rewarded fully what did john work for what did all the apostles work for you know they have put in so much effort so that one day the believers who have believed in the truth will be rewarded fully by the father you know they have gone through a lot of uh, uh, persecution the apostles and the other teachers they've gone through a lot of uh, of persecution uh, they've um, you know given up everything else in life to be able to do this ministry work they have invested everything all the work that they have put in it will be wasted if these believers are now led away by something that is false and so he says watch out that you do not lose what we have worked for we have worked so hard so that christ can be formed in you we have worked so hard so that you know you can get your full reward uh, so do not lose out on what you can actually get by being led away at this late stage you know by these false teachers who have now come on the scene so that's the point that he is uh, making over here uh, and then he says something very uh, you know uh, important uh, he says anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of christ does not have god whoever continues in the teaching has both the father and the son so uh, he says anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of christ because that's exactly what the gnostics were doing they were saying you see jesus christ revealed some things but now we are running ahead beyond that we now have fresh new truths you know we are one stage beyond what was spoken what jesus said was fine to an extent uh, but now we have been given a fuller revelation by him so now they are adding new things to what has been taught and they are running ahead of what was already taught um it, i keep getting all these windows on my thing screen you you i mean everything is fine right the video and the audio and all are fine i'm assuming because um I don't know I'm getting Ma'am, everything is fine today there is a network issue so we all are struggling getting in and out in and out automatically okay 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 fine maybe it's just that all right yeah so there are people who are uh, you know running ahead of the truth adding to it and the danger with them is that even though they are running ahead and you know presenting new teachings on Christ the sad thing is that they, they do not even have Christ that's the danger so if you say that you have coming up with you know new uh, fancy teachings and you say that you are receiving new revelations and it sounds very interesting and it sounds very creative you know gospel is so simple gospel is so basic and so you have uh, teachers and preachers who come up with fancy teachings which make it make this which take the simple gospel and try to make it more um more you know um intellectual and fancy and uh, more pleasing and then people will say wow what a sermon you know um, uh, uh, i never even saw this passage from this angle uh, now were you actually meant at all to see that passage from that angle is it something that is part of scripture does it agree with the rest of scripture or is it something which is being added on uh, which is not really gelling with the what the rest of the of scripture is saying so you see it may sound very interesting it may sound very creative and original but what is creative and original you know um, uh, to our ears may not really be what has been established from the foundation of the world because from the foundation of the world the lord has been teaching only one single um, truth so whatever he says in any part of the old testament or any part of the new testament has to gel with the rest of the scripture and if it is not if it's not in line with the rest of scripture and it's something which is completely new and apart then however creative it sounds it's just somebody who is running ahead of what has already been taught and the danger is that such people do not even have god they're talking about god they're talking about new revelations from god but they do not even have god so that is a danger that we need to watch out john faced this uh, you know dangerous issue back in his times and we still face that even now 
uh, when people you know are coming up with all kinds of new ideas especially now with this whole uh, uh, new age philosophy that is coming in now people are trying to christianize some of it and they tend to bring in aspects of that new age teaching and attaching it to uh, the teachings of the bible and that's so dangerous uh, because such people even though they talk about spirituality and what not they do not even have god and here it says in verse 9 on the other hand whoever continues in the teaching you know the simple teaching which 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 is presented in the bible the very basic teaching which sounds foolish to the people of the world you know uh, so even though it is so simple even though say it is so basic this is the teaching which will help us to have both the father and the son um and uh, what exactly does this mean you know having both the father and the son it reminds us of john 14 uh, 23 you know where the lord uh, you know says if anyone loves me he will obey my teaching not some other teaching my teaching he will obey my teaching and what would be a result of that my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him so through the holy spirit we not only just have the holy spirit in us we literally have even the father and the son in us you know through the presence of the holy spirit we literally have the triune god in us and that's the privilege we have if we are holding on to that simple teaching which is there in the bible which does not sound very intellectual or clever or very superior or mysterious but it's the truth it's the fact so we should hold on to that rather than being led away by all kinds of uh, you know uh, false doctrines uh, just because they sound pleasing to our ears so this is this is the main thing which is trying to bring out over here um moving on from there to the next verse uh, if someone could read out verse 10 if anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting okay there are two things mentioned here uh do not you know invite him into your home that is one thing and do not even give him a greeting you know um, they are like presented as two separate things uh let's talk about the greeting part you know when someone comes to your home as a guest in the in those days in the, in that culture um you would speak a word of blessing upon them and uh, if you were to do that with a false teacher who has come to your doorstep it's like as if you are affirming what he is teaching it's like as if you are you know saying you know be blessed in this in this um in this work which you are doing of of spreading false doctrine so do not even speak a word of blessing or a greeting you know of uh, upon that person and of course do most definitely do not allow him into your home okay so um uh we, to understand this better we would have to have a uh, you know better idea of the way uh, hospitality functioned in those days uh, so um when people would uh, go from town to town uh, as you know preaching uh, you know as as traveling preachers uh, they would generally not go and stay in a public inn uh, because even though public inns and lodging places were available they were not very safe uh, you could get you know robbed over there uh, and um, uh, each town would have its own you know local governing bodies you know some some lo- some governing body to look after the law and the order so they would be more interested in catering to the people of that town rather than to strangers so if a stranger comes into the town they would in fact look up on that person with suspicion because they don't know really why that person has come and for what he has come and uh, so even the the law uh, the local law agency over there would not be very much in favor of a stranger so if you go place yourself in a inn or some lodging place um you're at risk you're not really safe over there and so mainly you know these traveling preachers would approach uh, the homes of people and seek shelter over there uh, because then the people of that home you know can provide them with protection and 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 you know take care of them and uh, so over here um if you are actually uh, welcoming someone into your home you're 
you're in a way uh, you know declaring and saying i trust this person i vouch for this person and uh, you know whatever happens i will take care of this person so you're actually taking on responsibility it's not that you're just giving a meal and you know a bed to sleep on you're actually vouching for that person so if you do that with false teachers that would be dangerous because it will send out the wrong message that this person is correct in their doctrine and it's all right to welcome them and listen to them so uh, there are larger implications here you are you're not just being nice to a person you're actually you know um approving of what they are doing and in fact you're making an indirect declaration in front of everyone and saying i believe in what this person is saying by accepting them into my home so it would kind of make it you know risky uh, so he says if anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching of you know jesus then do not take them into your house or even give them a greeting of affirmation not even a give greeting of blessing um yeah asha we are doing second john second we because we finished first john last time we are now in second john okay um so uh, over here when he says um do not take them into your house it could refer to an individual believer taking a traveling preacher into their house or it could also refer to um the house church accepting someone into their house church you know to to be the preacher and bring the word and share with them uh, the teachings so that would have even more serious implications uh, because it's not just one individual believer saying okay fine i'm sheltering this person but rather the house church is affirming and saying see we approve of this person's teachings we have you know accepted this person uh, into our group and now he's ministering to us he's imparting teaching to us and we are accepting it as the uh, truth so all these uh, you know implications were involved and so um, uh, john over here says you know do not do that and that is why he says in verse 11 anyone who welcomes them shares in their wicked work so it's not just that you're uh, being uh, you know kind and offering them shelter what indirectly happens is that you actually become a participant in their wicked work of spreading false doctrine and um, um all these things are being told to these believers and it sounds very strange to us because we think yeah of course in its common sense you don't really need a letter to be written for this but you see these people were so um young in the faith in those days uh, the church was still new they had been taught about love they had been taught about you know hospitality and kindness and uh, so they probably were thinking that it would be impolite you know to say no to someone who's coming turning up on their doorstep and saying you know please you know let us stay over here because uh, the church is supposed to be the uh, church of love it's supposed to be the church which accepts people and uh, so maybe you know in their uh, innocence in their naivety they were opening their homes up to people who are now bringing in wrong teachings and so john says yes we need to walk in love we need to walk in truth but make sure that your love and your truth are in sync so if you're showing love to someone who is not following the truth then that kind of a love is not really love it is just a risk a danger that you are that you're putting the entire church at you know so because of that wrong act of false love that you have shown the entire church is going to now get the wrong message that this person is all right and that his teachings are okay so he's addressing a, an issue which can be you know more easily understood uh, by by you know um, uh, people uh, here in uh, you know west asia you know in in our in our regions where you know we have this hospitality thing it's considered rather rude rather impolite to say no when someone turns up at your doorstep um it's it's part of our culture we are supposed to open up our doors we are supposed to welcome them in uh and then once we welcome them in then how does the rest of the community look at that person now they consider that person as part of our household you know under our covering and uh, so they accept that person in the same way they accept us 
so the same the, the same credibility which they give to us you know after all they've known us for so many years uh, the rest of the community they start giving that same credibility to this person whom we have taken into our home so all of these social implications are involved and that is why he is saying be very careful about this do not welcome them in because if you do that it's like almost as if you're indirectly participating in their uh, wicked uh, work um okay uh yeah, yeah yes brother go ahead yeah Ah uh, yes, uh, thank you, Pastor. I uh, just wanted to understand uh, with the relation to the uh, you know uh, dealing with uh, false uh, false teachers uh, and people who uh, you, know, um, you know do not follow uh, the you know mm. the, the correct uh, doctrine. Mm. Uh, what comes to mind also is you know when Jesus um, encountered um, Pharisees, for example, uh, you know he was he was quite strong. Uh, you know, the, in the way he, he dealt with them. Uh, so I just wanted to understand, uh, you know, in, in, a, in the current context, um, you know, there are uh, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, people who, uh, you know, consider themselves pastors and, you know, and they, they also, uh, uh, you know, uh, we know that, you know, they are, they are not following the, the right doctrine. Mm -hmm. They're not even preaching the right doctrine. So, should we, as as believers, um, uh, you know, just not, uh, you know, uh, tolerate them at all, and you know, just uh, you know, you know, be uh, be as strong as you know, uh, you know, against them, uh, not uh, not have anything to do with them. What what should be the way, the correct approach uh, in in the, in the current context? Yeah, just wanted to understand that. Yeah, in our current context, uh, we would probably meet them in social settings. Uh, I mean, because I'm I'm just thinking, you know, in terms of just my own experiences. You know, you go to a kind of a pastoral meeting where you know you have people from different churches meeting together, and then uh, you know that there are some people over there who come for the occasion. You know, and you know that the teachings which they have been spreading are not really in line with the gospel. Uh, you stand over there and then you, they come up to you and they talk to you. So then, you know, we all just interact with one another. Sometimes they do bring up their view and then we express our view and then there's this uh, hot debate which takes place. All of those interactions do happen. So we, um, we you know, when, when someone like that walks up to us, we don't you know, turn our face away and say, I refuse to talk to you because you know you are holding on to a wrong doctrine. In a very polite way, we speak to them and we say, you know, these things which you are saying, uh, they're not in line with scripture. So, you know, um, uh, why why do you believe these things? So maybe we could start a discussion with them. We would talk to them in those social settings where we meet with them. But it's quite another thing if you know if I were to invite that person to my church and say you know I uh, you know um, uh, why don't you come you know and, and attend one of our services, then it becomes risky because immediately uh, the congregation which is watching will think oh if this person has been invited to attend our church this week does that mean uh, uh, the pastor and the elders agree with what this person is teaching? It'll make them wonder. It'll make them think twice. So. Uh, inviting that person to my church uh, to attend the service or in fact even maybe stand up and speak would be highly dangerous and highly foolish it would be what these people were doing over here you know so where i'm sending out a wrong message to the entire church saying this is okay these teachings are all right so we would never invite such a person uh, to the church and give them a speaking opportunity or invite them as a special guest now, if the person walks in on their own, we would, uh, in our present context, not say, you know, please, you know, leave. <laughs> that would probably be very, very uh, rude. Again, see, it's all these social implications that are involved. So we would not want to say, you know, leave. But at the same time, we would definitely take a stand and say, this is what we believe in. Brother, what you are, uh, you know, saying is something that we do not believe in. We would have to kind of at least make that, uh, you know, clear so that people are not led away so 
uh, to what extent do you cut off a person like that um it would be good to be polite uh, it would be good to you know um not be rude because that would be very unchristian as long as we make it very very clear that we do not believe in the teachings of this person and make it very clear to that person too saying that brother we don't believe in what you are saying uh, i we strongly believe that what you are saying is is not in line with what the bible is teaching so we would make that very very clear but at the same time there's really no need to be outright rude and rough in our speech and in our conduct um i guess does that help at all <laughs> uh because i mean there have been occasions when such things have happened yeah uh, does that help uh, brother or uh, would you like any other any follow up questions yes i think that that that, that definitely help yeah. um mm. i'm just thinking in the in the in the, mm. in the uh, occasion that you know a person like that um, uh, you know comes to our comes to our you know, apc church of his own mm. accord um mm. not sure if there have been such you know situations where um, that person has not been encouraged to you know come again in case you know he starts uh, trying to uh, you know talk to some of the other um, other parishioners who, who are coming to the church um so i think you know something to something that probably was needs to be uh you know what uh, carefully uh, and i'm sure you all might you all must be doing that in some form or the other because um, you know it can it can create a lot of discord in, in the church also you know, having someone like that uh, come there yeah. yeah i mean um, usually if someone comes in to the church they this usually no issue in the sense they just come sit there quietly and then they interact with a few people and they go away uh but if such people come into the you know uh, cell groups uh there you have discussion right because then they bring up their views as well and uh, over there there's more um, you know danger and so yes in such cases if that person is very uh, voluble in what they are saying and they are refusing to accept what we are presenting from the bible then we would probably have to take a step and say uh, you know you really cannot attend our cell group simply because uh, your doctrine is not matching with our doctrine and we need to you know uh, teach our members what we believe is the truth so yes you you know please do not attend our cell group anymore we would actually have to take a stand and say that uh, but generally in the church when they come it is usually not an issue because uh, they just simply have you know the tea and the biscuits and they just say a few sentences and they leave but if they are pulling people away you know you know they come over there with the intention of you know influencing people and pulling them to their uh, false groups which are meeting somewhere else now that of course would be risky and then of course we would have to take a stand and say you know you are not welcome in this church that would all be in extreme cases that it generally things they generally don't go to that level uh, so yeah yes all right um yes so we will take our break now uh, so at 10 o'clock uh, let's come back and we'll continue with this letter thank you